is a buzz down Tobacco Road in Chapel Hill, North Carolina because of the exports of their beloved Tar Heels. Tonight, their opponents in the Owens Corning preseason NIT quarterfinals, Rutgers. And here's a look at the brackets. On the line tonight, a win for either team, and it's a trip Wednesday to New York City playing Broadway in the semifinals. Both teams winning impressively in their opening round games. As for the Star Watch, you know what, Jerome Coleman has proclivity, folks, for 30-foot jumpers as he crosses midcourt. He had 18 in their opening win. Meanwhile, Rashad McCann's told me that he even surprised himself with 28 points in his debut, which, by the way, is a North Carolina record. I'm Mark Jones, along with Brad Doherty here at the Dini Smith Center. We are set to tip it off. Quarterfinal action here in the Owens Corning preseason NIT. And Rutgers comes in here wanting to make a statement. I'll tell you, Mark, we got a heck of a matchup. Really look out front. Jerome Coleman, Mike Sherrard. Those guys put a lot of pressure on the basketball. This is a team that forced 27 turnovers Monday night. They're going to put a lot of pressure on this young Carolina front court. This matchup has all the makings of a track beat. Immediately, you see Sherrard get up, right up into Raven Felton. These guys are not going to give you any inch. They're going to be in the passing lanes, a lot of pressure on that perimeter. McCants, Felton, these guys are going to take care of the basketball. Jackie Manuel is going to have to come to the basketball, create opportunities to get loose. Good thing with Sean May, he can come up top, relieve a little pressure, and he handles the ball very well for a big guy. May with a nice perimeter shot as well. He had a very auspicious debut as well. There's Manuel in the lineup. Manuel walks with it. They're going to call it actually a jump, and it'll be Rutgers' possession. Here's a look at the Owens Corning starting lineups. One of the intriguing matchups, as we mentioned just a few moments ago, Wright and May in the middle, as well as the backcourt matchup, Raymond Felton going up against a great defender in Mike Sherrod. Absolutely. I talked to Coach Gary Waters, the head coach of Rutgers, before the game, and he kept mentioning this was a pivotal game for his program. He's got a very physical basketball team. They're going to come out and attack Carolina, trying to knock them back on the heels. Good patience running down the shot clock all the way to 12, and Kareem Wright missing the jump shot. Good Here pass. Felt. Good pass into the top of the key. Kareem Wright gets a good shot. May rejected inside by Lamazana. Lamazana, long arms, long reach, 6'10", about 220 pounds. Both teams coming up a little bit cold and short here. Head coach of Rutgers, Gary Waters, is in his second year. Last year, able to turn things around. They went 11 and 16 two seasons ago. Last year, he was 18 and 13. As for Matt Doherty, two years ago, he was the national coach of the year. And then the well-chronicled 8 and 20 record last year. This was a bit of a defining season for him in a coaching context. Inside they go, Rutgers. And Kareem Wright misses again. Gary Waters ask of his players to be in physically superior shape. They do a great job getting these guys ready. Ramazana, great block. Back, Back comes Rutgers. Rutgers. Hands on the ball. Inside, rough, tough sledding. Jerome Coleman missing. Manuel, he has a notion. And it's way off the mark. Tough shot by Jackie Mangle. Carolina's got to slow down. Rutgers creating the tempo right now. Carolina doesn't want to jump out and get out of control. Three-pointer off the mark by Coleman. This is the type of tempo that Carolina was able to take advantage of against Penn State a couple of nights ago. Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty. Last year, North Carolina stumbled to an 8-20 record. Rutgers 18-13. Brad, Matt Doherty said that they were the favorites coming in, trying to flip the script a little bit, but in the big picture, you have to say that Rutgers comes in trying to make a big statement oh, against a power team. Absolutely. Rutgers is a basketball team that won 18 games last year. They're trying to go to the next level. North Carolina's in a rebuilding year. They have three freshmen, but those three freshmen are McDonald's All-Americans who played a lot of AAU basketball. Very competent basketball players. Coach Gary Waters said he wants to hear none of it. Let's get after it. Let's play ball. Williams inside. And a foul against the Scarlet Knights. Juan Williams, the sophomore from Cleveland. Interesting that a couple of nights ago in their debut against Penn State, North Carolina, for the first time in school history, starting three freshmen. I think what you'll see tonight, what we didn't see the other night against Penn State, Mark, is that Rutgers 
is going to, they're not going to back down. Uh, North Carolina came out, punched Rutgers in the mouth. Uh, I mean, Pitt State in the mouth, excuse me. They backed down. That's not going to happen tonight. These cats come to play. They won by 30 points. A lot of it was early. Getting out and running, and a lot of the points, all of the points actually, scored by North Carolina, scored by the freshmen and the sophomores. You look at all the points scored by North Carolina against uh, Penn State, it was mostly transition baskets. Not going to be a lot of that this evening. You have to meddle up, run your offense, nice sharp cuts. Everybody's got to be alert and aware. Shot opportunity is going to be few and very infrequent. Hey, this number speaks to the defensive efforts of Rutgers. They held Columbia to just 36 points, along the fewest points since a 30-29 loss to St. Bonaventure in 82. And they get on the board. Kareem Wright, that big body, 6'9", 275 pounds. Sean May's got his match in there. Incredible difference in tempo between this game and the last one. Back comes Coleman, and he drains the jump shot. Jerome Coleman, 18 points against Columbia on Monday. He's, he plays with a chip on his shoulder, Mark. He feels like he should have been first-team Big East player last year. Maybe should have been. It's a, it's a conference full of guards, and he felt like he was one of the top guards, maybe top two. So he comes in here trying to prove something. May wide open underneath a goaltending call against Rutgers and Lamazana. And it'll be 4-2 now, as you could sense in speaking with some of the Rutgers players and coaching staff that shoot around today that they came in here trying to make a statement, earn a little bit of respect. And uh, one of the players I ran into at the hotel earlier said, I don't think these young guys from Carolina are ready for what we've got for them. So we'll see if uh, that player's mouth wrote a blank or rubber check or not. <laughs> I think these young guys from North Carolina are going to be able to step up to the challenge. They're really good basketball players, good basketball IQs, but uh, the pressure, can they handle the pressure early? Great ball fake by May, who's off the mark. Out of bounds, and it's off of North Carolina. Lamazana fighting underneath for the rebound. Big fellow with some nice skills and movement underneath. One thing he does well is move without the basketball, but when he has the chance, he can put it on you with it. Nice hands, good footwork, square to that basket, good job, good fake. Just couldn't quite get the shot to go down. John May's father, of course, Scott, played at Indiana, national championship team. Jump shot outside by Lamazan off the mark. And here comes Phelps. Tough pass. Can't do that. Not going to get away with that at this level. Felton had 10 assists a couple of nights ago. Threw that one away, and Rutgers were able Shields. to convert on it. Ricky Shields showing a lot of athleticism right there. Mark one right down the gut. Charging the basket. Not a real shot blocker back there for North Carolina. And I tell you, Kareem Wright, he will do a good job against Sean May. Kareem Wright, 6'9", 270 pounds, big body. And a soft touch by Manuel outside. Jackie Manuel, he'll be, he, he's got to be the difference. His ability to slash and get to the front of the basket will take a lot of pressure off of these freshmen. Talking about McCants, Felton, and May. He's got to step up, show the leadership, along with Jawad Williams. This is a trap that North Carolina used very successfully a couple nights ago against Penn State. The outside jumper off the mark that time by Shields. Shields tees it up again. And misses twice on the possession. Here's Felton back the other way. Carolina looking to push it early in the ballgame, and they turn it over. That's their fourth turnover so far. Interesting that Rutgers able to take the crowd here out of the game early. Well, they, like I say, they, they're in the ballgame. I mean, uh, you know, initially, as we go back to Monday, keep referencing that game, it's over with. But, uh, you know, Penn State was out of the game the first three minutes of the game. Mike Sherrod fouled on his foray to the bucket. He'll go to the line for two. Sherrod, a six-foot-two-inch junior out of Brooklyn, New York, the backcourt teammate of Jerome Coleman. Both of them go back to high school together where they played at Paul Robeson High School in Brooklyn. And he'll go to the line for two. A good defender and uh, actually did a lot of work on his shooting this past summer, going to shooting camp. A shooting camp run by uh, Dave Hopla, and it works frequently with uh, NBA players. Off the mark in the first. Brought out of the mold of most of those successful New York City guards. A, a great ball handler, good defender. They'll be trying to put the clamps on Raymond Felton. Couldn't quite get those to stay down. Good looking touch on that shot. Gotta step in, concentrate. It's gonna be big, big points at the end of the basketball game. Now Rutgers gets the turnover. Here's Coleman from the corner. I'll tell you, they're just not shooting the ball well, doing a great job getting the turnovers. They shot poorly against Columbia, only 40% from the four, even though they beat them by 30. McCants is off the mark too. Rutgers has numbers. And they throw it away. Got to get on the floor and get that basketball. Amazon outside. 
Bowman was open cross court. They go inside to right. Working on May, and May knocks it away. Good hands by May. Took the, took the blow from right, just backed away, slapped it out of his hands, tough pass. And Carolina turns it over again. They're sixth already. Just five and a half minutes into the ball game, and head coach Matt Doherty a little bit hot right now. The turnover is telling the story. Rutgers with the lead when we come back to quarterfinal action here in the Owens Corning preseason NIT from Chapel Hill. ESPN's presentation of the Owens Corning NIT preseason tournament is presented by Owens Corning, innovations for living. Jones and Brad Doherty courtside here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. 6-4 just underway with 14.05 to go. And uh, the beginning of this game for Matt Doherty's crew much different than a couple of nights ago against Penn State. Absolutely. I mean, as you see, they're off to a horrid shooting start. But what we've got to do, Mark, we've got to move past Monday night. This is not Penn State on this basketball floor. These guys from Rutgers are tough. They're physical. They've got leadership. They're going to come play hard. And you see the freshman right here, their debut performance was outstanding. Once again, I don't want to talk about Penn State anymore. That's done with. Tonight, Rutgers is in the house, and they're going to bring it. They can't get too high on their own vapors from Monday evening. Although, Ray Felton was the first one in the gym on Tuesday at practice. Putting that great performance out of his mind at 10 assists. They go inside, Rutgers does. And you got a basketball team with two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore. Good back down, nice post move. Ramazana, the angular and stringy forward. So long, the junior comes in. Nice little finger roll there off the glass. Rutgers leading 8-4. to four. May inside. Oh, that's a good touch. You know, May had an interesting talk with his dad after the game. His dad thought he did better than he thought he would do. He said, son, you can work a little bit better, though, running the floor yeah. and at the offensive end, especially rebounding. Talk to Coach Matt Doherty. He'd like to see Sean get up and, and transition more on the offensive end and defensively get back and slow the basketball down with the guard. McCann's on the move with the finger roll. There's no gimmicks. you got to finish that. Great hustle by Kareem Wright, but it's out of bounds. It'll stay with North Carolina. They were shot, wished he could have that shot back. He'd like to go in and dunk that basketball. You can't go in easy on these guys or lay it up softly off the glass and you get a race. Hey, when will the Memphis Grizzlies ever get their first win? One of the questions that begs is tonight at 9 Eastern, Allen Iverson, the 76ers face Pau Gasol, Jason Williams, and the Grizzlies. Hubie Brown, 0-3 so far as their head coach. I would say Hubie's hair can't get any wider, but it, something will happen before the end of the year. It might start falling. <laughs> Inside, McCants double team and blocked. A jump ball. Nice defensive play that time by Sean Exani, who's checked into the ball game. A 6'7", 230-pound junior from Sonny. Red Bank, New Jersey. Yeah. Sonny comes in, very physical player. Look at this. He's not going anywhere. Shot tries to clear some space. He says, no, sir. Gives him a monster mash. There's Manuel on the perimeter. Rutgers just is not going to let anything be easy. They defend so well, but McCants. There you go. Brings the three. Maybe that'll loosen him up. The shot showed great range last week shooting that three ball. They're not going to be able to stuff it down and throw it inside. Loosen up a little weak side. Pass back. He knocks the three down. They're going to give him a little room. Rod to Lamazana. Right back Lamazana. at you. Oh, oh, oh. It's the three. Right back at you. Shot 41% on threes a season ago. That's a veteran basketball play. He knew the shot was wide open. Felt the pressure release. Locked the shot there. A lot of confidence in that young man. Early returns indicating Rutgers not at all intimidated by this venue here. A sea of Carolina blue. Absolutely. They were looking forward to coming in here playing. A great defensive play. Good anticipation. And on the move is Shields. Get a guard here. Lamazana feeling it. Thumbs up short. Rebound Williams. I tell you, still a nice move by Lamazana. Did a good job going to his right. Right into the middle. Nine, ten foot shot. Who does this tempo favor, Brad? One of the I, other I really think it favors right now Rutgers because they're so aggressive defensively. Coleman fouled on the block in the backcourt. You know, it's okay to be up-tempo, you know, offensively if you're going to come back and return it defensively. But Carolina's not doing that. So many coaches are tempted to pull the reins in and not let their teams go, but Matt Doherty letting his team go a little bit.
Let's talk about what makes Raymond Felt the, the, the player he is. Watch him turn this corner. He turns, the defense has to come. Absolutely, right here. This gentleman has to step over and help out. Otherwise, either Felton turns the corner, goes to the basket, and he jumps to sell the shot, giving Rashad McCants a chance for a wide-open jump shot. He makes the most of it. That's what makes him so effective on the court, Mark, his presence. And Rashad McCants spotting up behind that further out three-point line. They moved it back to 20 feet, six inches, the usual one, the regular one, 19-9, and they've wind the lane by two feet, which changes the angles in the post-up game as Rutgers posts up to Lamazana inside. Well, I'll tell you, Lamazana's a tough matchup. Whoever gets switched on to him or has to guard him has a long night. Reminds you a lot of Kevin Garnett with that, that body frame. Long, lanky, able to finish around the basket, shoots the three. Well, I'll tell you, he is tough. From the Ivory Coast, from Africa, Africa. came to the United States at the age of 14 and has really refined his skills in his game and speaks a couple of languages uh, speaks French as well as English his family's still back in the Ivory Coast a country right now torn with the strife of civil war wow. talks about his family quite a bit actually second in the Big East in blocked shots and as you mentioned with that kind of reach he's gonna get to a few a good uh, Weak side or help side defender. Oh, absolutely. He's going to come weak side and block a lot of shots without guys even knowing he's in the area. And Carolina, not a team with a lot of size inside. Absolutely not. They, you know, Sean May, 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, that's about it right now on the fourth, these guys. And he's not really a shot blocker. He changes a lot of shots because he's smart, puts his body in a good position. But uh, other than that, they don't have much you know, behind him defensively to come in and block shots. Calvin Wooten in the ballgame guarding Felton right now. Wooten, a freshman, inside to May. May goes up strong and gets it to go. Good job May has by May. Six. Good pump fake by May. Goes up nice and strong. He's got great hands, soft hands. Did a lot of work over the summer playing against the likes of Jared Jeffries and A.J. Guyton, a lot of Indiana former players. Rebound to Felton. And Felton looking for the hit ahead. Felton on the push. He sees the four so well. McCants inside. Oh, 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 oh. McCants again. Oh, Aksani rejects him, but wow. fouls him in the process. I tell you, Aksani, he says, don't come in here with any of that little stuff now. I like that attitude. Look at Phelps. Look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. Look what he's looking at. All the time, he, he takes the whole form, the whole landscape in as he's moving up court. Sees everyone. Nice move by McCants down low. Good block. Noel goes up a little bit easy with that. McCants comes in nice and strong. Zani's still waiting on him. Man. <laughs> McCants at the free throw line had 28 in his debut a couple of nights ago, setting a Carolina record. There's a look at Felton. We talked about it in the game against Penn State. He is drawing comparisons to none other than Phil Ford. A lot of pressure in that, but I tell you, I, I don't like to, to, to do those comparisons, but he's got that little hop like Phil Ford, a little Dominique Wilkins, Phil Ford hop. Cover a little bit of ground on that jump shot, and uh, it's interesting how Felton also has that little bit of a skip. Up a little oh, skip. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's working it a little bit. And working the radio waves as well up top. There he is, Phil Ford. He's, He's way, way up, up top. top. There he is right there. They couldn't put Phil a little closer. I'll tell you, that. <laughs> Phil's got to get a better seat. we got to talk to somebody about that. <laughs> Tied at 11. I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty courtside. Quarterfinal action here in the Owens Corning preseason NIT. Will Johnson comes into the game, one of the two long seniors on the basketball club, North Carolina. Out in the ill-advised shot that time, a little early in the shot clock. Rutgers isn't afraid to go 10 people deep on the bench. And that's a huge advantage for them. As they go on into their play in the Big East uh, this year, that's going to be huge because that conference is, like I say, so guard heavy. There's so many good guards in that, that league with, with Knight and Troy Bell and, and Marcus Hatton and all those guys. Carolina's turned up the ooh, defense. Ooh. Bay upended on the pass from Felt. And May went to the court hard. On the line tonight, the winner moving on to a semifinal matchup in New York next Wednesday. UNC Greensboro taking on Kansas. Kansas winning impressively in their opener against Holy Cross. Boy, they looked good last night. Kansas played really well. Heinrich Collis and those guys really did a good job of creating a lot of energy. Simeon came in on, came in and, and played a super basketball game, showed a lot of physical presence. I tried to watch as much of that game as I could last night. That's a little past my bedtime to <laughs> stand up that late, but it was a great game. Got the number two, seven, and 11 teams still alive. Here's 
Scott in the ball game. Cross court, Scott gets a clean look from three. Well, you can't give him an open look. Melvin Scott coming in, playing that two guard. Really gives him an opportunity. Doesn't want to handle the basketball a lot. Head through last year, put him in an awkward position. He's a shooter of the basketball. Once he gets square, it's automatic. Whoop, now top. Oh, downtown, downtown, way off the mark. Bad right down the rebound. That's yep. Yep. Wigan. Calvin Wooten took a tough shot, put a lot of pressure on his teammates. They're lucky to get the ball back. Another chance of possession, get a better shot. Carolina going to a little zone here, Brad. Why? Small basketball team on the floor. They got John Holmes in the game along with Scott. Those two guys, six feet tall, Will Johnson, six eight. They have no size on the floor besides May. They got to defend that paint area somehow. Oh, inside, nice feed to May. May a real space eater. He has eight in the ball game. Absolutely, great hand. Snatched that basketball nice and aggressively went up strong. And Gary Waters says we got to put a lid on this one and slow it down. They call timeout, trailing by five. We talk about Sean May's hand. You've heard me say that several times this evening. This is a very difficult pass to catch. Look how low that basketball is. You're talking about a 6'8", 275-pound guy going down to the floor to get that ball. If he'd have thrown me that ball, it would have hit me in the knee three times. I'd have never touched it. <laughs> Great hands. Look at these catches. Look at that one hand. Good face up. Puts the ball on the floor. Nice little touch over the top. Good block, good body, no foul. Gets the ball out, moves it up court. Very important to move that basketball in a direction where your team can advance. That'll make your coach smile a little bit too. And Brad, as a postman coming in, usually they talk about freshmen, one of their deficiencies might be post defense. How yeah. do you think he stacks up in that category? I think he does a great job. He's not a great shot blocker, obviously. You know, he doesn't have the great, the great length to block shots. But what he does well is he eats up that defensive space. He never lets the offensive guy get comfortable on that block. And that guy can be as effective as any shot blocker that plays the game. Sean May getting a rest. His fitness level still not where he wants it to be coming off of that knee injury. Meanwhile, Carolina in the midst of a nice run. They lead by five, under nine minutes to go in the half. I like this group in for Carolina. Oh, nice shot. Three-pointer good that time. Ricky Shields does a good job just taking his time, getting the shot. A little bit too much room between the defender and Ricky Shields, and he just drains it. Got the lead down to two. Carolina's got a nice rotation in right now. They've got Noel, they've got Sanders, Will Johnson's in, Holmes is in, Melvin Scott. This is a great team that can form, that will come in secondhand as far as giving the, the starters a break to play significant minutes. Got to develop that. Noel on the baseline, the former football player. Drawing the foul. He was set to sign as a wide receiver on the football team here at North Carolina. And uh, Coach Doherty uh, convinced him to stick with hoops after he started getting recruited, too, by some other ACC basketball teams. Man, I'm glad he's here, but I think we could have used him on the football team this year. My Tar Heels are struggling a little bit, but that's all right. They'll keep digging in. Top to Noel. Good ball movement. Look at that ball movement, North Carolina. Look at that. Snap, snap. Good pass, good pass. Good defense as well. Rutgers continues to move their feet. They like to extend it. Look at Jerome Coleman. Look at him move his feet. 20 on the shot clock. A lot of arms in that passing lane. They can test everything. This is good basketball right here. Good on the ball pressure by the Scarlet Knights. Oh, he's got him. He tried to reach, tried to reach for it. He's in trouble. Got to make something happen. He didn't make Five anything on happen. The shot clock. They got to go. Holmes has got to put it up. One second to go, and they throw it away. I'll tell you what, Mark. He had him. Melvin Scott had him for one second. Talking about Jerome Coleman. He reached for the basketball. That's a breakdown. You got to go by, shoot that ball. Rutgers able to stymie the momentum of Carolina just a touch. We'll be right back. Rutgers with a great defensive sequence just a few moments ago, and this is the best group of pickpockets since, uh, what, the Artful Dodger maybe, and Oliver <laughs> Twist. Look at this. Absolutely. Mark, these guys are unbelievable on the ball. The pressure is extensive. You look at North Carolina, North Carolina has nine turnovers already in this basketball game. Let's put that in perspective. If I'm coaching, I want two and a half to three turnovers per player in my starting five. I don't want any more than 15 in the game. Already North Carolina has nine. Gotta check your pockets if you're Carolina. I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty, this is quarterfinal action in the Owens Corning preseason NIT. Rutgers touch shot by two. By much longer either. Man, Not what a swell. Ricky Shield deep in that corner with a man on him. He just decides to make the shot. A lot of confidence in that jumper. I got you. 
Big confidence too, McCants. Somebody's got to make something happen. Somebody's got to make something happen for North Carolina like that. They're going to have to keep matching those baskets. Even though they're up two, I think the confidence and swagger still is with Rutgers at this point. Sherrod on top, working on Felton. Nice Rod pulls it out. Coleman, Woo! the fly, he's not shot. Rashad Coleman had 18 points in the opener against Columbia. I mean, that's a tough shot. Good defensive pressure by North Carolina right up in his face. He just comes off a pick and just fades away and shoots a nice, you know, 20-foot shot. What are you going to do? Gantz drives it in out top to Scott. Fortana's doing a good job on the post. Good help. Gantz off the mark. Rebound to Felt. I tell you, North Carolina got lucky on that. Rutgers did a good job defensively. Zana stepped out and gave great help. Long rebound. Short timeout called by Coach Doherty. Long jumper starting to come down now. I mean, McCants is right there with him. Could be up maybe another foot, but uh, he just drills that. Right back at you on the other end. There you go. Sean Mason, come on now. Let's play some defense. Get up there. Let's get after him. Let's play hard. These guys are challenging us. You see a lot of chemistry with the young guys already, Brad. A lot of it has to do with the fact that they were on campus in June. They got here early. They had a lot of time to go to class together, play together. They played here from 6 o'clock in the evenings until almost midnight on some nights. Not only that, Mark, these young guys all played McDonald's All-American games together. They were all together, you know, as, as, as high schoolers. They saw each other a little bit AAU ball. So they've seen each other for years. So now there's a, a camaraderie there, and now the teammates, it gets even, the bond gets stronger. Keep in mind that all the points were scored by sophomores and freshmen in the first game. Inside, nice move, knifing along the baseline of the 41 Byron Sanders. Nice pass down low, good hands, straight up, nice and strong, easy lay in. Carolina with a one point lead. Boy, does he have a great handle? Sherrod off the mark though. Johnny keeps it alive. Rebound, Colton. Tough shot. Guard him. It. <laughs> you better guard him. Nothing but butter on him. that much. You got a guy standing up on him and he hits it. What you gonna do if he gets a free one? <laughs> he has 11 in the ball game already. Yo, yeah, mercy. Good defense. Good defense. Boy, Rutgers really with a lot of ball. Oh, just moving those feet. Oh, good run at the ball. Tough shot. Look at Zani coming out of that rebound. And Zani fights for it. He's fouled in the process. Get in there and dig it out. I mean, look at this, look at this. The ball's a tough shot, great ball awareness by Shields. He knows where he's at. His, his pivot foot never moved when that basketball was bouncing towards him. That's a good basketball player, good basketball IQ to know when he gathers that ball up finally, he's in shooting position, his shot is off. Ricky Shields, three times last season, the Big East Rookie of the Week. First freshman to score back-to-back 20-point games since a guy named uh, Phil Sellers. Maybe you remember him back in the 72-7. Yeah, I, I remember him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he made it to the final four. Inside, Lamazana. Oh, oh man, man. Rocks it. Up top was Adrian Hill, the freshman, skying for that one. What the youngsters from North Carolina have to realize, when that ball goes up, you got to turn. Everybody's got to get somebody. And a foul on the play against Mike Sherrod, the point guard. You know what? Rutgers has some freshmen that can play above the rim, too, Brad. Absolutely. They're matching that athleticism that North Carolina displayed the other night. Tough shot by Lamazana. Almost makes it over the top. I mean, if you're a basketball coach, that, that, that's going to drive Matt Doherty crazy when a guy can float in and get a tip over top of a guy. Coach Waters says that Hill is a bit of a steal, number four for Rutgers. Got him late, September the 3rd. Coach Waters really doing it the right way. Last year, 18 and 13, a 22-year assistant coach. Well, when he came into this program, you know, he shut the doors on this facility. He wouldn't let these guys in the gym until they got their academics together and got their house in order, one step at a time. They got their house in order defensively, almost coming up with a steal as Ricky Shields. Shields very impressive at both ends of the floor. Well, and, and Coach Waters, he has this program this quickly. They're one step away, Mark. One step away from making it to the next level and being one of the, the real super competitors in this league, which Rutgers basketball hadn't been in 10, maybe 12 years. And you look at that dossier, 22 years as an assistant coach. Some of his influences, Ben Braun at Eastern Michigan. 
John Winnick at Ferris State, some of the people that he really patterns his coaching style and philosophy off of. I think he's paid some dues. 22 years, that's incredible. I like this man. A lot of fire, a lot of intensity. He demands that these kids be in the best physical shape they possibly can be in. And I know you were, we were talking about this earlier. You know, his teams are, are his, this basketball team, he has five kids that can bench press oh, no, you know, for, over 300 pounds. That's incredible. That's strength. And it's reflected on the way they play. May hits the free throw. Folks, don't forget Friday, the Owens Corning preseason NIT continuing on ESPN2. 7 Eastern, North Carolina Greensboro takes on Kansas. These two schools, interestingly enough, have never met before. 25-23 now, May making both. I mean, you, you like what you see from Rutgers. They're being very physical, uh, not backing down. They come right back and score. Shields with a circus shot. Maybe forced that one a little bit. He was hoping to get a foul on that. May did a great job of creating space. There's Manuel trying to draw contact. May almost stripped. They are swarming North Carolina. Manuel comes up with it. They are swarming and trapping all over the floor. Got to calm down, get a good shot, good look at it. Williams inside. May. Loose ball. Carolina came up with it. I mean, they are a bust side defensively, Brad. They're just swarming all over the ball, like you said, Mark. I just think that they're creating such chaos on the court. I mean, look at this. You're going to see four guys around this basketball. Just out of nowhere, they're all over Sean May when he catches the ball. And they're creating such chaos for North Carolina, a young basketball team that still hasn't gotten its feet, you know, the, the proverbially wet yet. To the bucket, Azani, a block and one. Oh, man, what a drive. Sean Azani took it to the cup and made it pay. May may have been a, a step late there. Got to see the replay on that. I thought he was in pretty good position. Big fella gets over there to take that charge. You like to see them big guys do that, man. You got to give him that. Oh, he's there. He's there, Mark. They missed that one. He's there. He's there. And officials like to say that they will not reward the defensive player on a right. play like that if he's Under right the underneath basket. the basket. That's right. I think he was clearly out in front. Uh, tough call, but I, I think he was there. Sonny, meanwhile, nonetheless goes to the line. Carolina and Skelton with the rebound. A four-point lead, and what a move. Manuel, not quite, stopped on his foray to the bucket. Well, I tell you, Raymond Felton just picked the defense apart like Swiss cheese. He had the handle going right and left. He broke a couple ankles coming up the court, Mark. <laughs> Great job getting that ball. That's what he's got to do. He needs to keep the ball in his hand. Look at this. There he goes. He goes right. There he goes left. Oh, man, he's got knees aching out there, Mark. Somebody got crossed up. He's got to go to the front of the goal. He, he has to to create opportunities for his teammates. I want to see more passes from him, giving guys layup opportunities instead of lateral passes for jump shots, especially against a good physical basketball team like Rutgers. Sometimes with freshmen like Felton, they have a tendency to play a little bit fast sometimes. You see that happening yeah. in this game? He plays fast, and what it does sometimes is it creates panic on his teammates because they're trying to keep up with him. He's so good and so fast, you're trying to be fast to stay in sync with him. Coleman shot that from about 25 feet away. Not good shot selection right now from Rutgers. They got a seven down. They've got complete control of this basketball game. They need to keep that control by doing what they need to do, what they practice every day. Tough foul against Rutgers on Mike Sherrod. I mean, I like, the, I like the defensive pressure. I think Sherrod's up in, he's up into Raymond Felton, maybe knocks that ball away. I don't want to start getting on the officials. It's too early in the year. I got a long way to go. But, you know, I like that pressure. I don't know if that's a, a, a foul or not, but I think it's good that he's up getting his hands, digging that ball out, letting Raymond Felton know if when he puts it on the floor, he's going to be there. The interesting thing about Coach Gary Waters is that in that blowout victory against Columbia a couple of nights ago, he said, we didn't want to show too much on tape so that Carolina can dissect what we do. So a little bit of a chess match evolving here between Doherty and Waters from the sidelines. We talked to Coach Waters earlier, and he was telling me that, you know, last year he just put enough into this basketball program that the kids that were playing and participating would be able to go out and have some success. He says he didn't show his full hand. This year he's going to mold this group into showing the whole, the, the whole deck of cards. So I'm expecting big things from these guys. Gary Waters in his second year as head coach at Rutgers University. 22 years of his as an assistant. He's waited his time and trying to make it pay off now. We'll be right back. Back here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, Rutgers with a one-point lead, 27 to 26. I'm Mark Jones along with Matt Doherty and Brad Doherty. Check that. Very belt. There you go. <laughs> 
awareness. Quick. <laughs> he's so fast, and the problem that we're talking about, he's moving up the court at such a quick pace. His teammates are trying to keep up. That's hard sometimes. The guy's so good. He throws passes that can hit guys in the back of the head. He's one of those type of players. So he's got great vision on the basketball court, and as a player, you got to be watching his eyes because he already sees you. I have those hands ready inside. That's the freshman, Hill. Off the mark, May with the rebound. Good defense. Dwight Williams gets in there, digs that ball out. It's a tough shot. Calvin Wooten now on Felton. The pass. Nice feed inside to Williams, had it knocked away. Williams made a nice catch, though, inside. And Williams will go to the line. Freshman having an impact on the game here and around the country. I'm going to tell you what, uh, Matt Walsh last night, he just went for Florida. Pass well away. He got his game on. Very impressive. And one of the questions big in Syracuse right now is how long will Carmelo Anthony stick around? Yeah, man, I hate to hear that talk. That's, that's too bad. It's not good for our game. Yeah. But the guy's got a lot of talent. Can't blame him. Williams missing the first of two. Johnson out of the ball game. McCann's back in for North Carolina. Meanwhile, Amazada comes back in for Rutgers. Rutgers yet to hit a free throw. Carolina not a good percentage so far, just 5 of 10. It's going to come down to these things, free throws, turnovers, taking care of that basketball. The Rock is so valuable. Williams a pretty talented sophomore in his own right, but somewhat forgotten in all the freshman hype here. Yeah, absolutely improved tremendously last year, you know, fundamentally. And a charge against Wooten. Jawad Williams needs to really exert some leadership. I think this is his team to take these young guys up by the reins. Little push-off. See Wooten there, trying to get a little space, a little aggressive play. Got to play smart. Be aggressive, be smart. Had a chance to watch Wooten and his teammates in practice this morning. There was a very physical defensive drill that they would do when they checked the ball. The guy checking the ball would slam it into the offensive player's chest. That is an unbelievable pass right there. That is a, an unbelievable pass. That pass was high, hard. I mean, and a guy, you have to have great hands to catch that basketball. Most guys would have hit the back of the head. May with 12 points already. Carolina back up by two. Really good catch by May. That's just great karma between those two guys. And the karma for Rutgers right now is starting to fade a little bit. They throw it away. Time out on the floor. As Carolina driving in addition, Brad. Nice pass. Look at that. I mean, the pass is a little high. May makes an excellent play out of it with familiarity. Diaper dandies, as we talked about. There's Felton, the McDonald's All-American game, Madison Square Garden, throwing it to who? That was Carmelo, That's Carmelo Anthony. Anthony going up top. Look at this ball handling by May. We know this guy. Rashad McCants. These guys, like I say, have a lot of familiarity. Got to play together early. Play against each other a little bit. Scott May, Sean's dad, was on hand for the debut a couple of nights ago. I asked Sean if uh, he was going to stick around for this one tonight. He says, oh, yeah, Mark, uh, too far to drop back all the way to Bloomington. <laughs> That's 19 hours. It's good to have Scott in the house. We're glad he's here. We're glad his young man's here, too. Two-point Carolina lead. Full-court pressure. Joel Wigan now guarding Felt. They're using a bunch of different people on Felt. Brad trying to slow him down a little bit. Here's Manuel. Giving different looks. Going to be around him at every angle of the court. Williams with a jump up. Good. Good strong move by Jawad Williams. Good post up. Power step into the middle with a little baby hook. He has three points to lead up to four. He really improved at the end of last year. Struggled early. Fundamentally wasn't as sound as he should have been. Got a lot better. Joel Wigan finds his way to the bucket. Nice move by Wigan. Just played with the flow of the game. The opening came up on the baseline. He continued. Didn't stop. Wigan comes up with a steal. Don't foul on this. And rejected by May. Oksana with a putback and good. Great hustle by May stopping that shot. And it's a tie game once again. Oksana's done a good job. He really hustles. I like his play. Type of guy you've got to have on your team. But with all the people that you see Rutgers using, it can be interesting to see if Coach Waters shortens his bench in the second half. Boy, you're exactly right. Good, good deal. Manuel in charge. charge. Lamazana stepped in, did a great job, took that shot. Don't forget, folks, coming up at halftime, Matt Weiner in the studio. Fabulous freshman around the country, some NBA scores and action to give you, and uh, West Virginia, Virginia taking on Virginia Tech, an update tonight in a big college football game down in Blacksburg, West Virginia.
Tied at 31. Here's Wigan, and he throws it away. May with the pitch. Oh, he put it on spin cycle. He has 14. Sean May putting it on the floor, going almost the full 94 feet. That gets a rise out of the fans. Amazana baseline. They move it around nicely. And once again, Ricky Shields pays off. He has 14. And Rutgers has a one-point lead. The Scarlet Knights have stormed into the Dean e. Smith Center here in the first half. Unintimidated, undaunted, and unflappable. Manual baseline to Williams. An air ball shot that time by McCants. Rutgers with a chance to go up three. Shields. And one. Oh, he's got candy for everyone. Man, what a great move to the basket. Rutgers showing a lot of, of, of aggression going down to the offensive end. No back down in their fight. Their game is going to take, they're going to take it to North Carolina every opportunity. Ricky Shields was arguably Rutgers' best player in preseason. Witness this. Takes it to the cup. Foul, no doubt about that one. Goes glass at that. And he'll go to the line, trying to complete the three-point play. He has 16 points. I mean, if they go in at half, up at all, it's a, it's a huge swing for Rutgers because this is a team, like I say, coming off of three road wins last year. That's all they had. And so they come into this building pumped up, saying they're going to change that this year. They're, they're tired of, you know, they want 18 ball games and only three of them are on the road. Some of those wins, Brad, against some big programs, albeit at home, UConn, Syracuse, Georgetown, and Miami, when all four of those previously mentioned teams were ranked nationally. Three-point lead for the Scarlet Knights. North Carolina spreading the floor. Eight seconds on the clock. Felton. Scott. Rebound, Scarlet Knights, and the first half ends with Rutgers leading 36 to 33. Coach Gary Waters' crew looked at the building and said, you know what, it's like any other place, folks, that we've played. We've got a job to do, and we plan on making a statement today against Coach. one of the perceived powers, and right now, Brad is standing by with Coach Waters. Coach Waters, you guys came out very aggressive, very physical, didn't shoot probably as well as you'd like. What do you like about the first half, though? Well, I thought our kids didn't quit. They played hard, and uh, the thing that I'm really disappointed at, we missed, we missed five free throws, and we're a good free throw shooting team, and we missed five. We'd be up by more if we hit our free throw. Absolutely. What should we look for in the second half? Well, we're going to play the same kind of aggressive defense, but we got to stay out of foul trouble because I lost some of my key players during that period. Absolutely. Good luck to you, Coach. Thank you. All right, Brad, and the first half ends. Rutgers with the lead storming back in the last minute and a half of the first half. It's 36 to 33. Looking to pick off another one of the perceived perennial powers. Right now, back to the studio at Matt Weiner. Matt? All right, Mark, thank you very much. So Carolina with 33 points in the first half. Remember, they had 54 against Penn State the other night in their season opener. The Tar Heels 6-0 in this event, all-time in Chapel Hill, but on the ropes right now against Rutgers. Stay with us. Much more coming up at halftime, including... Welcome back, everyone, to the Dean E. Smith Center here on the campus of the University of North Carolina, where Rutgers leads by a score of 36 to 33. A look at our ESPN game track. Rutgers with that great defensive pressure, Brad Doherty. 12 turnovers forced in the first half. North Carolina, though, doing a great job on the boards, especially Sean May. Well, I think Rutgers did a great job also of, of fouling in the right positions. They spread out 12 fouls over seven players, put a lot of pressure on the perimeter, and forced North Carolina into some chaotic movements. So, you know, we talk about North Carolina having the camaraderie and the freshmen. You also have to remember that the backcourt for the, the Scarlet Knights, Coleman, yeah. those guys went to school together in Brooklyn at Ropes and High School, and uh, they've got a lot of familiarity as well. It really showed and paid off at the end of the first half when they surged forward to take the lead. I mean, we've got to, once again, reiterate, this is not <laughs> Monday night. You know, this, this team is for real. They missed some free throws there, or they would be up, you know, another five points. Monday night, North Carolina trounced Penn State by 30 points, and the freshmen all got theirs. So did the sophomores on this team, but this is something of a different matter. Ooh, nice move. Bam. Boy, Kareem Wright. Kareem Wright. He is four. I mean, great catch, great post-up. Move back to the middle. 
Kareem back off the board. Kareem Wright, 6'9", 270, weighed 330 pounds at this point last year. He lost 50 pounds. That young man is to be commended for his hard work work ethic. Brad, I spoke to him before the game as they come towards our table. It's up to 55 pounds that he's lost. That's right incredible. Now. That's incredible. Why'd you catch this basketball? Look at all this space he's eating up in here. He's got Sean May pushed back into the lane. You got to get those feet out. Nice little fake to the middle, little jump hook off the glass. There's nothing but money. The coach told him at the end of last season, son, you have to make a commitment to your conditioning and your career. Or else simply put, you won't play. Well, coach is saying he's the most hopeful guy on this team. He's got great enthusiasm. And the guy's committed. I love to see it with a young man. Everybody else pushes you down. You're a little overweight. You want to do it. He gets himself in shape. Works hard now. He's a, a big time contributor to his breakfast team. Holman with a quick one on the baseline. No good. Back comes Manuel for North Carolina. Lamazana turn it over. Yep. Lamazana right there. Great hands. Long rangy. Tough pass inside. You got to make a sharp hard pass or get that ball. Don't float it in there because he's going to be in the passing lane. That was the 13th turnover of the ball game for Carolina. Off the wing. Holman had a notion. Here's Lamazana. He creates such problems because he can step out at 6'10", 6'11". He's maybe seven feet tall and catch that basketball. Coleman, runner in the lane. That was halfway down. Went after his own rebound. Calls a timeout wisely and gets it. Great hustle by Rutgers. Great hustle. Almost kept the rebound alive. Coleman said he was a little too hyped for his opener against Columbia. Trying to settle his team down right here. Rutgers with the lead by five. When we come back to Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Well, one of the most illustrious graduates of Rutgers University, Paul Robeson, the thespian, the singer, the civil rights activist, fluent Brad in about uh, 20 languages. 20 languages. That is incredible. Also, the valedictorian in his class 1919 at Rutgers. Sherrod and Coleman, both graduates of Paul Robeson High School in Brooklyn, New York. 20 different languages. Man, I have trouble with one language, the English language. How do you speak 20 languages fluently? I, I, even though I'm from up in Western North Carolina, we have some our, our own slants on the language. You speak you know. deep south. Uh, right? Exactly. <laughs> but uh, 20, that's incredible. The Rutgers right now speaking the winning Woo! language as my man Kareem Once Wright. again, Kareem Wright, Wright, baby, catches it on that high block. Big, powerful drop step. Got good hands, good little touch off the glass. Likes that angle. He can't do anything with that shot. Sean May's got to front it. Needs to get in front. Disallow the pass inside. The entry pass has to stop. We talked about that a little earlier. Freshmen with their post defense. Sometimes a bit of a concern. Absolutely. Absolutely. Don't forget tonight, the NBA season rolls on 9 Eastern time. Allen Iverson, AI, the answer. The 76ers taking on the Grizzlies at 9 Eastern time. Iverson with some comments recently about feeling unsafe in Philadelphia. That's incredible. That's it's incredible, says he yeah. fears the police. You know, I spoke with uh, one of the people of security, his security detail, and that is realistic. He really does feel that. That's 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 awful. I hate he has to live under that pressure. Felton from outside nails the three. Raymond Felton. Good right ball move. Carolina back. Good ball move by North Carolina. Felton wide open. They're going to allow him to shoot that shot. Make him prove that he can make it. Looking into the eyes of Sherrod now, picking him up at half court. Rutgers, I say they come right back. They'll come right back with something. Rod, nice feed inside to right. Who's feeling it? Oh, oh, it away. Oh, here, they oh. Oh. here we go. North Carolina. McCants with eight. He's the one that puts the hustle in their muscle. Two-point ball game. North Carolina has that little witch's brew going with the three freshmen. You get felt who can handle and put it in people's laps. You got McCants with the athleticism, and you got the big kid, May, who's got the good hands and can rebound the ball. That witch's brew, the potion starting to pull. Oh, nice Man. pass. There's the witch's brew we're talking about, Bart. <laughs> nice touch pass. Oh, I told Felt if I could have played with it 20 years ago, I'd have averaged 30 a game. <laughs> Man, he can get the ball to the guys in the right position. Not it at 40. Gary Waters calls out the play. A little high screen from Amazon. Now we'll see how Rutgers handles the pressure. All right, getting big inside. Nowhere to go, good defense. Kicks it out to Lamazama. Tough for three. shot. Tough shot. What a oh, ho, 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 ho. That's a shooter's roll. That is the shooter's touch, baby. It gets front iron, side iron, little glass, and down. <laughs> Swirly down. Rutgers back up by three. Hey, you got to have some of those. That's a part of the game. Got to have a little luck. Manuel out top. 
May posting up on right. Oh, gotta have patience. Gotta have patience. Got a lot of time on the shot clock. Work your offense. Not a one man show. Right now. Felton spinning. Baseline Williams. Great hustle with Charlie On the glass. Boy, Coach Darty. I don't know what he said at halftime, but I'm sure it was incentively laced <laughs> to get these kids to participate. They're getting after it. And I did say incentively laced, <laughs> not incentively laced. Tough shot. Rod. Good defense. First, just a little bit. It's a two on one. Up top. Great pass. Manuel. They might want to get a timeout. Coach Waters is going to go with his veterans, though. Let him play through it. Boy, Shawana. listen to this place. It ain't jumped like this in five years in here. This is awesome. The rebirth has begun in earnest here on Chapel Hill. They're giving them something to be excited about. Tough shot. Ramazana. Oh, oh, oh. I tell you, I, every time I say tough shot, he just drills. He has got enough to feed the needy. He's got 11. Wow. What a, what a great shot. Rutgers back up by two. They keep responding, Brad, with an answer. I mean, they're just showing a lot of guts. May putting it on the floor. And he's called for the charge. That's going to happen. Big guy gets to go into the basket. It's going to be hard for him to get there. McCants, May, and Felton start to crank it up once again like they did a couple of nights ago. The precocious freshman percolating when we come back to Chapel Hill. Well, earlier we called Irving Lamazana a poor man's KG. Maybe he's a not so poor man's KG. Oh, man, he is playing wonderful. Irving's got 11 points, three from three from the three point line. A couple rebounds, a couple blocks, a couple steals. He is cool as the other side of the pillar. I'll be a Huckleberry, baby. He's got it going on. I love this kid. Just so smooth, so fluid. Hitting big shots. He takes tough shots, but he makes them. Doing it at both ends of the floor, too. Changing a lot of shots at the defensive end by Carolina. Rutgers with the lead and the possession. They lead by a pair. North Carolina, they're going to have to step back up. They did it in a burst for about the first four minutes. Came out, played very aggressive, very hard. But Rutgers is not going away. There's the leadership on the floor. Upper classmen have stepped up big. Coleman trapped up by midcourt now. Another trap. And there's a foul on the play at stake tonight. Keep in mind, folks, a trip next Wednesday to Madison Square Garden, playing on one of basketball's biggest stages. UNC Greensboro taking on Kansas Friday at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. But the winner of this game, and if Rutgers could win and make that trip to New York, that would be a huge boon to their program, not only in the respect that they would knock off one of the perceived giants of college football, Brad, but locally, it's a 45-minute train ride from campus to Madison Square Garden. Oh, they they want to be there badly, and, and I do believe this is a, a huge game for this Rutgers program. With what Coach Waters is trying to do, with the direction he's trying to take this program in, it's a huge game. Coleman with a finger roll, couldn't get his tip to go. Good May clean up the mess. Yeah, Coleman off balance. Tough shot. Almost got it to go down just because of pure athleticism. Good job, May, cleaning that stuff up. Akzani, meanwhile, ch checked into the ball game for Rutgers. Controlling the paint from outside off the mark. Williams with the rebound. Nice feed to May. Well, I'll tell you, May just doesn't miss around the basket. Good feed by Williams. Great recognition of teammates. He got it to him up and in. May is so light off his Absolutely. feet. Absolutely. I talked to Coach Darty about that today. I said, Matt, guy weighs 275 pounds, but he moves like he's 6'6", you know, 215. Matt says he's got great movement. Here comes Carolina. Manuel came up with the block. May, tough pass and tough catch. Made a mistake putting the ball towards the floor. Three on two now. Coleman tried to draw the foul. He's really off his game tonight. He tried to draw the foul. Anytime you have to lay up opportunity, young kids, you're going to the basket, you shoot the ball, make the shot. Good rebound, good touch pass. Look at May. Ball doesn't come down, goes right back up. And May, meanwhile, coming out of the ball game, wincing in pain just a little bit. That's not good. If you're Matt Darty, that, that two, those two black hairs that Matt has in the back of his hair, <laughs> they're going to get off of Graves if stuff like that. He has to have Sean May, he has to have Rashad McCants on that floor. Look at that great shooting percentage, 8 of 11. Rutgers inbounding. Here's Sherrod out top. As we approach 13 minutes to go in the second half, not at a 46. Not the place you want to be. That's a great trap opportunity for North Carolina. Aksani rolling into the lane, kicks it out. 
I'm going to say tough shot. Ramazana. Oh, finally. He didn't make one. But that, good look at it. Tough pass. Can't throw it. Can't throw it at this level. Shields with the pinch, and he turns it over. Middle mistake right there. Rutgers last season going 18 and 13, coming off just an 11-win season. That speaks to the great coaching job of Gary Waters, the regional coach of the year. What hurt them down the stretch is this number right here. Only three wins on that road, and uh, they really took it on the chin. They beat some good opponents at home, including Miami and some of those people in the Big East, but not enough on the road. They beat UConn at home. They, they had some good wins. Yeah, some of the young players hitting the wall. McCants had it rejected inside. Good Mazzana. Absolutely. Ramazana makes a good block. Balls out on North Carolina. Another good opportunity. I like the opportunities that Rutgers gives himself. Now, Brad, this is something we talked about. What are your thoughts on the interior work offensively of Carolina? They don't have a lot of bigs nope. on the bench or on the floor. Well, when Sean May goes out of the game, they're going to struggle. I mean, Jawad Williams has the ability to post up. He's more of a fluid type player like Lamazana, so he doesn't do it, you know, consistently. Sharon doing it right there. Hits the jump shot. Putting Rutgers up by a pair. If you've got a big basketball team, you run at North Carolina. You post them up. Make them play you in the half court. They may struggle. There's Williams trying to post up. As you mentioned, not really a big post-up player. Aksani with the pull. Amazana kept his position, held his ground. Good defense. Sherrod on the move for the Scarlet Knights. Rutgers needs to come down, exhibit some patience. Take it to this young basketball team. You have to admire their pulls. Absolutely. So Absolutely. May's not on the floor. Let's get an easy light. Let's get an easy shot. Close shot. Let's don't settle for the 20 foot. Shields. He walks. That's his second consecutive turnover. All out Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins <laughs> walked for years. Used to get away with it. I used to try to tell the fish they wouldn't listen. They weren't listening to you, huh? They wouldn't listen. Shields couldn't get the credit for that hop. He hopped a little too much. Meanwhile, Lamazana doing his thing. here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Well, Scott May told his son, Sean, he wanted him to be a little more active tonight. Looks like he's following the formula. He's getting after. I want you to watch this. He's always putting that ball up. He keeps it up at all times. Not bad to have a guy like Raymond Feldman get you the ball, but he's got great hands. Good touch. Good pass to Williams up in the basket. I'll tell you what, he may be, and I'm going to go on record, the most valuable player on this basketball team this year. He, they have to have him in the game. And right now he has checked back in after writhing in pain, holding his right wrist about two minutes ago. I mean, he goes out of the game, and this, this team's going to struggle. They lost their post-up presence, and they turn it over here. They've turned it over 17 times tonight. Sherrod back the other way for Rutgers with a two-point lead. At stake tonight, a trip to New York for Wednesday's semifinal. Inside, Lamazana with a oh, soft touch. You can't get him up. You can't get him there. He has 13 in the ball game. And Rutgers up by four. Okay, Lamazana yeah. from the Ivory Coast. And North Carolina throws it away again. That is a rush pass. Can't move quick on that. And Lamazana, once again, we talk about the Kevin Garnett. Look at that. Turns around, nobody's there. That's what you do with it. Big kids, young kids, you get that basketball. You turn, 10 feet from the basket. I don't care what's going on, you shoot it. You really got the whole package. Got to make yourself a weapon on the floor. He is. He shoots it from three-point line. He shoots layup. I mean, he does it all. And he's very confident. You saw going to break just a few moments ago, him looking over his shoulder. He was talking a little bit of trash to some of the fans here. Did it a few seconds ago as he inbounded the ball. And he goes back. You know what? The way that his game is talking, he can say and do anything he wants. Amazonas says, they can't stop me. Y'all don't know. You better ask somebody. <laughs> Up six. He is going to work. Felton. A little bit out of control. Get on the floor. Well, well, well. Get on the floor. A lot of time in this basketball game. If Carolina's got to settle down. 15 on the shot clock. That's money. That's money. Scott. Oh, in and out. Good rebound. Aksani comes up with the board. He's done a very good job, quietly so, underneath. He's done a good job. I do like the, the shot North Carolina got. Lamazana, though, from the Ivory Coast of Africa. Making a little noise, Brad. I'm telling you, the home folks back in the Ivory Coast are awful proud this evening. This son is going to work. Look at this. Nice post-up. Very patient basketball player. He's got a good feel. Feels Noel on his body. Little alteration.
switching up the shot, saw the guy coming behind him, had the eye in the back of the head deal going on. Nice touch off the glass. Came to the United States at the age of 14, and uh, maybe they are watching it back in the Ivory Coast on ESPN. Oh, they're, 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 they're cheering for Amazon right now. You never know. 52 to 46. Thought about it. It's just so smooth. You know, no hurry, no, you know, no, no panic in his game. Carolina going to his own now. Why? Got to. You got to get that basketball. You got to push it out. Force him to shoot some jumpers. Manuel almost coming up with the loose ball, but you know what? Rutgers just a half a step quicker here in the second half. Man to man, North Carolina's getting taken advantage of. They're getting eaten alive down the post. They go to their 2 3 zone or 3 2 zone. Right now it's a 2 3, trying to create out shot opportunities for Rutgers. They're going to get a Rutgers will get a chance to shoot a jumper here somewhere. And the number one sniper, Brad, not on the floor right now. They've done all this with Coleman being relatively That's quiet. Exactly right. Smart play by Matt Dorn. See if it works. Shields inside. Oksani kicks it out. Lamazana. Oh, my goodness. He's looking at fingers in. Blinging tonight. I'll tell you what. Lamazana. Yeah, he gets a little space. It's over. He has 18 May counters for Carolina. I tell you, that's a good shot. Just wouldn't stay there. Good hustle by Manuel. Don't panic. Nice feed by Scott, and they miss another easy one. Boy, Noel missed it underneath. Rutgers ball back the other way. It's a great hustle by North Carolina. Couldn't get the shot down. Rutgers showing a lot of a lot of metal hustling as well. I'm as I don't know. We can't say enough about this guy. But look at this. You give him six feet, Jack, and uh, you're gonna be getting nylon on your forehead. They better learn how to pronounce his first name. It's Elbe. 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 Sounds good in any language. There you go. It's smooth, man. Little touch pass out to the point. Is Rutgers in a position now, Brad, to be a little more patient on the clock, or does that disturb the rhythm? Absolutely. Be patient with the clock, but be aware. Anytime there's a good shot opportunity, take it. Don't force it. Just like that, that's a good pass. Nice feed inside. Good pass. That's good basketball. That's good basketball. Excellent pass inside. Down on the block. Good catch by Wiggins. He gets a little shovel pass to Zani. Layup. That's textbook basketball. Rutgers, Brad, in the midst of an 11 to nothing run. Nice move. Jack Emanuel uses the glass, uses the basket, reverse layup shields the defender on that temporarily stops the hemorrhaging for Carolina but they trail by nine points under eight minutes to go here we're here in Chapel Hill North Carolina quarterfinal action in the Owens Corning preseason NIT I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty look at our game track so far Lamazana heating it up primarily here in the second half Sean May the leading scorer meanwhile for Carolina also with 18 but Carolina has hurt themselves with turnovers. That is Hervé Lamazana, the junior, 6'10", from the Ivory Coast. He has been the product of teamwork, good ball movement. And right now, Oksani helping his team to the lead, 57-48. presentation of the Owens Corning NIT preseason tournament is presented by Owens Corning innovations for living we are back here at Chapel Hill North Carolina quarterfinal action in the Owens Corning preseason NIT Rutgers on a spurt here in the second half sprinting out to a 57 to 48 lead I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty when you think about Irve Lamizana, he reminds you kind of another guy oh, down in Miami, right? Absolutely, Darius Rice. Similar players, long, rangy, shoot the ball really well, facing the basket, can post up. These two guys are very, very similar. I love Irve Lamizana. He is just playing super basketball. So smooth, so fluid. Look at him. Catch, shoot, catch, shoot. In the passing lane, block shots. He can do it all. Shoot the three-pointer. He can take you on the block. This kid is going to be a superstar in college basketball. He has had... 13 points in the last 12 minutes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Last offensive possession, Rutgers showing a lot of boys going deep into the shot clock and getting a layup out of the possession. Lamazano once again, back down, back down. Somebody better cut him. Where's the help? There's no help. Guards don't dig down and hits a pay. This guy is smooth as silk. He has 20, and the meter's still running. That's a huge mistake defensively. He's backing up. You can't let a guy take six dribbles with a guy on his back, and no one come help double team. Guy scored 18 points. Williams fouled inside. But let's, talk about this. Way, let's talk about this. I mean, he backs this guy down. There has to be some type of help from somebody. You see him with the basketball. He's going to move all the way into this area, and there's no help. May has to come. He has to come. That has to be a double team. Look at that. You can't give that guy that type of shot. He's too good. 
Too much space. Well, Amazana having his way, having a lot of fun here with the fans. Having a running dialogue with Carolina fans on both respective baselines. He's giving them a hard time. My guy's Johnny Cake and the guys down at Finley Golf Course here in Chapel Hill. They're going crazy right now. They told me, hey, Brad, say something good about the golf course. I'm going to say it's a wonderful place to play golf. But they said give us good luck tonight. They better pick it up. I can't help these guys. <laughs> Uh, right now, uh, Lamazana is the one hitting it straight down the fairway for Rutgers. Ten point lead. And this free throw, missed opportunity, Ricky Shields. Brad, now we get a chance to see how these young freshmen for Carolina respond under a little adversity. This is the first time with the big time pressure. Let's see how they do. What, what happens? What kind of mistakes will they not make? This is the real test. On the baseline, no good. Wigan. Couldn't get it to fall twice. He had a point blank shot. I like his, I like his hustle. Manuel, good job. Good recognition. And a good hit ahead by Felton on the play. Felton sees the guy wide open under the basket. Manuel with nine. The lead is down to eight. Let's get, let's get slowed down with the basketball if you're Rutgers. That's a tough pass. Felton, that's a tough pass. McCants. Make it easy, make it easy. And he made it look easy. Very good. Time out. You got to get a T.O. There we go, there we go. Gary Water is going to top this over with his team. The lead down to a tenuous six points. Just a sampling of the college basketball action in the Owens Corning preseason NIT. Don't forget, Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN2. North Carolina Greensboro taking on Kansas, number two in the country. And Kansas was hitting on all cylinders a couple of nights ago. Here's a look at the brackets online tonight. A trip to Wednesday semifinal in New York City. I'm going to tell you, if you get a chance to watch Xavier play, Romain Sato and David West, those guys are unbelievably good this year. Thad Mata's got a super basketball program. These guys need to get a little respect because they're extremely good. Having to play against Cincinnati and all those folks every year, they don't get the respect they deserve. They're going to shock some people this year. Well, Rashawn McCants isn't tallying as many points as he did a couple of nights ago, but Sean May somewhat picking up the slack from an offensive standpoint. And they've showed some resilience. I mean, they've gotten right back in this ball game very quickly. Something that North Carolina didn't have last year. When they got down last year, they got beaten to the ground. Here's what the freshmen have done tonight. McCants with 10. May leading the way with 18. Felton, more importantly than those five points, his assists and his floor boxing. That's right. And you see him right now playing some defense. He has six assists. And the half-court pressure causes a turnover for Mike Chirac. Mental mistakes. It's incredible the mental mistakes will eat you alive at this point in time. And right now, Brad, we notice that Coach Gary Waters has all his starters. Does he shorten the bench or not at this point? I think you do. I mean, you got to get it. You're trying to create rhythm when there's only six minutes to go in the ball game. But Pants with a nice ball fake. Back out to Felton for three. Williams inside. Nice job. And the lead is down to four with six minutes to go. Here come the tire heels. You don't want to get passive with six minutes to go if you're Rutgers. I mean, you still want to make things happen. Don't make it such a slow basketball game that every possession is, it becomes a microcosm of the game. Oh, Boy, what a killer that's shot. A shot. Yeah, Sherrod, that's just a Sherrod. tough shot. Mike yeah. Sherrod silences the crowd temporarily. He has four. I mean, you have guys like that who just look for that little opening. A lot of problems. Those guys win ball games. Boy, Felton just ready to blow by. Good pass. Manuel coming off the curl, fouled on the hold. I mean, Sherrard's coming down. Good defense. Goes right by Felton. You're thinking maybe he's going to set up the offense. He gets a tiny hole, and he just drills it. And uh, Coach Doherty, well, I'm sure he wasn't too pleased with that. But, I mean, it was, a, it was a tough shot. They've made tough shots all night, Mark. I mean, it's not been anything easy. And Rutgers has worked for everything they've earned. And they are working at the defensive end, forcing a turnover by the Tar Heels. Well, not a good turnover. The 19th grab of the ball game. Wow. Now, one guy that hasn't gotten off, we mentioned it a few moments ago, Jerome Coleman, the team's leading scorer from the, the season ago. At this point, is this the time where you want to go to him? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Coleman brings the senior leadership into this ball, though. You've got to have him. You've got to have him step up at this point. Timeout. Timeout. Rutgers. With 5.13 to go in the second half. 
Freshman making a splash all over the country. Absolutely. We saw Carmelo Anthony up in Syracuse a couple of nights ago, and Duke with a very talented freshman class as well. Oh, man. We'll see them next Monday. It's Davidson, Shaflett, Randolph, J.J. Reddick, Sheldon Williams. Those guys over in Durham are getting ready to have a great season. Best coach in college basketball, Mike Krzyzewski over there. Had a little problem with his hip flexor. We hope he's doing well. Here's a look at the timeout situation. And speaking of a uh, guy who was a freshman uh, not that long ago in the big picture, uh, Ed Coda. He's a little more hair, though, huh? He got a little hair going on there. He's doing good, too. Look, he got them two diamond earrings in his ear. Man, look at that. He's doing something good. More carrots and a rabbit in there, huh? <laughs> oh, Ed can handle that basketball now. I'll tell you what. Well, Rutgers... From an offensive standpoint, the rhythm kind of falling apart, Brad, in the last couple of minutes. How did they get back to where they were before that? I think it's interesting. With Rutgers, I only saw, you know, in both halves, only made three or four minutes of just fundamentally running their offense, getting shots. You know, most of the time, they're coming down with Lamazana and those guys looking for tough shot opportunities. They're just looking for opportunities. I think they may have to go to that. The tough thing is that, though, in that, is usually up taking a long shot and it creates a long rebound opportunity. And with 5.13 to go in the ballgame, Brad, we saw the graphic a few moments ago. Rutgers with no timeouts remaining. Looks like Lamazana's not coming back in right now, which is interesting. With five minutes to go. No, I don't know. Maybe give him a, a quick 30-second breather and get him back in the ballgame and hit the big shot. Or 15. <laughs> or maybe put him in right now. Well, Lamazana's been the offensive spark plug for them here in the second half. North Carolina looking to trap. Better get some help. Rutgers in trouble. Good job. Good call. Good call. That's not call. Yeah, call has standing on the baseline. Good call. They got to get it over midcourt in a hurry now. Atsani to inbound. Got to keep an eye on the count. Here we go. And they just get it over. Coleman. Oh, he, 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 he. That was a rush shot right there. I mean, yeah, it opened up. But you got it. You, know, you got a six-point lead. McCants to the bucket. He's Strong move. Ball. He will not be denied going to that basket. The lead down to four. Coleman. Pardon me if McCants with 14. Oh, what a tough shot. And a foul. Oh. That is just, I mean, that's that's not a good shot. <laughs> you know, with, 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 with four, almost five minutes to go, you're up four points. You come down and transition. You pull up, you do a pull up three. McCants bailed I mean, him out, though. Let's see if this is a foul. Yep, got him, got him right on the forearm. Barely touched him, but it is a foul. That's just aggression. I mean, he takes it to the basket offensively, scores the basket. But that's an awful shot under those circumstances. I mean, the guy's shooting a 23-foot shot, and you got, a, a, like I say, a, a, a four-point lead. Interesting that McCancho was telling me during shoot-around that, I asked him, how did he react to his debut a couple nights ago? He says, you know what, Mark, I've been holed up in my room for the last day and a half except for going to practice. So it's good in that you don't get a chance to swallow some of the, uh, the, the poison that going to practice and going to class. <laughs> yeah, and class, of course. Rutgers has struggled from the free throw. I think they're two for eight at this point. And that is, uh, that's, that's, that's the big difference in this ballgame. Their lead would be, obviously be much more. They make some free throws down the stretch to win the game. For Ricky Shields, meanwhile, knocks a couple down. They back up to seven. Shields has 19. You know, coach at halftime, Coach Waters is saying he's just disappointed in the free throw shooting. 0 for 5 at the half. Got to make those. That's how you win big ball games. Well, now to Williams for three. Got a bank. He didn't call. You got, you've got to call glass when you do that, Juwan. That's a tough shot. I don't know if I like that shot, but it went in, so it doesn't matter. That's a tough shot. Boy, Shields tried to make a tough bounce pass to Kareem Wright. There's just a lot of carelessness with that basketball. Juwan Williams squares up. I don't know if that's what I want, but he doesn't care what I want. He calls Lance. I mean, he's wide open, a lot of confidence. Oh, yeah, he meant to shoot that off the line. <laughs> Absolutely. Story, I'm sticking with it. 417 to go in the second half. What is he doing? And they turn it over on the inbound. What, is he doing? what happened? And a foul by Shields. What, what? He just threw the ball. In. That is pressure, Mark. That's what pressure will do to you. The mental mistakes. Well, look at this. All right, he's got the ball. There's nobody there. He may have been trying to throw it off of Jackie Manuel's leg. 
Jerome Coleman, I, I think that's what he was trying to do. No guessing, really. Rather odd looking play, odd turnover. Sean May, meanwhile, posting up inside on Kareem Wright. That pressure's starting to get the Rutgers a little bit. And that is Wright's fourth personal foul. I like this, though. I like it. Amazana coming in, Jack. I like it. He comes in at the right time. City comes in and makes an immediate impact, changes the rhythm of the game. They've got to guard him. They've got to send two at him. Amazana was on the bench. He only had two fouls. So, ostensibly, that was for a little bit of a rest. Four-point lead for Rutgers. May fouled by Aksani. Good defense by Aksani. May shows good ball handling for a big guy. Aksani has four fouls. Wright has four fouls. So the bigs struggling a little bit for Rutgers. Coming up next, the NBA rolling on. 76ers taking on the Grizzlies AI as the Grizzlies look for their first win still of the season. May goes to the strike for two. What a ball game. I mean, this has been great. This game is, uh, I mean, Rutgers is, they're up four. I mean, they need to get the heads up on the bench over there. It's not over. It's not the basketball left. The momentum's still with them, even though, you know, the, the, the swing seems to be going up and out of work. They still have the lead the momentum. That they did have an 11-point lead at one point, 57 to 46. May with 18. Now 19. Melvin Scott checking into the ball game, May going to sit down. What do you make of this substitution? Melvin Scott's a sharp shooter. He's coming into the ball game to get that wide open three opportunity and knock it down, tie this ball game up. That's why he's coming. Take care of that basketball, Ruff. There's no carelessness. They've really struggled with the Carolina pressure. Shields thought about it. Now takes McCants off the dribble. Oxani! Thank oh! you very much. There you go, Oxani cleaning up all the mess. Good job, big fella. Let it be around that glass. Williams fouled, and he'll get two. So now Williams starting to look to get his a little bit. Been very aggressive. You know, Oksani needs to step out about another foot, and he gets an opportunity for a, a charge. That is his fifth personal foul. Boy, he's playing a super basketball game. Here's a look at our ESPN game track. Lamazana lighting it up from three-point territory. McCants, meanwhile, two of five from downtown. Oh, Sean Zani really came in and played hard, gave physical presence, blocked some shots, cleaned up some stuff down there with a nice dunk, really showed his physicality, wasn't scared to match up against the big bodies. He, he's undersized going against May, but he played him physically. Gary Waters uh, developing that bench, and that's a part of the preseason program as well for a lot of these teams, right before they get into conference play. Williams, meanwhile, makes the first of two. This is great for North Carolina at this point. You know, you're down four points with, with three and a half minutes to go. Let's see if you can learn to participate and to compete with this little crunch on you. The lead is down to three with 3.39 to go. Pressure makes diamonds. Pressure also busts pipes. We'll see who needs a plumber and who's 24 karat when we come back. Stick around. Tonight's game moves on to Wednesday's semifinal at Madison Square Garden in New York. Rutgers with a 66-63 lead. I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty courtside. Hervé Lamazana with most of those 20 coming in the second half. 15 of them maybe in the second half. Played huge. And Jawad Williams, he's had a huge night. Double-double. These two guys are the guys that are going to be the common influence. Good drive. Oh, and he was fouled. Sherrod fouled going to the bucket. I'm going to tell you what. A guy like Sherrod... I mean, he, he just doesn't, uh, he has no fear. Yeah, and he Shields no as well. These guys, Sherrod wants to win the ball game. He's going at all costs. Good play. Great hesitation, uses his body well. Now it comes down to making these free throws. But Gary Waters intimated at halftime in an interview with you, Brad, that he has a traditionally very good free throw shooting Absolutely. team, even though it didn't show in the first half. Oh, you know, you come into a place like this and you're hyped up and you're playing hard and you're getting after it with the historical building of North Carolina. You know, sometimes that energy doesn't translate to calming down, shooting those free throws. Got to make them. Come on, get in there, knock it down, Sherrod. You can make them. Ricky Shields, the team's most improved player and best player so far in this early part of the college basketball season for the Scarlet Knights. I call him Sherrod, Ricky Shields. There you go, Ricky. Knock it down, buddy. Need that. Need all of them. Four-point game again. 
Don't forget, coming up next, 76ers and Grizzlies. It's the Grizzlies look for their first victory this season. But plenty of basketball left here. Williams out top. Rutgers still here, man defense. Good pressure. Very good pressure. Good exchange on the weak side between the two guards. Maine looking to get open inside. Williams had a notion. Forced it up. Tough shot. Very tough shot. Rutgers with the rebound. Quickly up court to Shields. There you go. Smart play. Man, almost. That is a Coleman oh, shot. Man. Off the mark offensively. Still with the confidence to take it. Really bad shot. Up court. And McCants flushes it. I tell you, you got to be smarter with the basketball. Rutgers forced that. I, mean, I don't know. You can not say it so many times. McCants with two. Jerome Coleman with an ill-advised shot a few moments ago. Remember, Rutgers has no timeouts remaining. Coleman. Blocked on the baseline. I tell you, I, I don't understand why they don't get into more offense and get better shot opportunities. Is this the time, Brad, you run something specifically for Lamazama? You run something specifically for Lamazama or, or one of the, the big guys. I mean, get Kareem right the ball in the block. Create a foul opportunity. We're taking such tough shots. That's a tough shot. Shields and a chance oh. for Carolina to tie. Man, that is not a good shot. On the push. They got away with the goal. They know it was whistled. Not a good they blew it. Lamazana pinned it on the glass. And we are tied at 67. I mean, you've played 36 minutes of pretty good basketball. And uh, now you're taking just unbelievably bad shots. And it's given Carolina some life for it. And Rutgers struggling with this pressure from double Carolina. Dribble. Almost a double dribble right there. He got it. Double dribble. That's a good call. That is a great call. Coach Waters saying the ball was tipped to well, I don't think so. I think that's a great call by Carl Hess. Let's see if we can get a replay. Oh, man, Coach Waters. He sees it. It's unraveling. He's starting to lather a little bit. He's getting a ladder worked up over there. Carolina with a chance to go ahead. Don't try to do anything out of rhythm. Felton. Uh oh, man, that's halfway in the bucket. In and out. Halfway in the bucket. I'll tell you, that was not a good shot. Mark. I mean... Take your time. Maybe man. a function of youth. All you got to do is set some screens, set some good back screens, create some space. Let's see if Lamazana even gets a touch on this possession. Let's see how much of the shot clock these guys use. Where's the screen? Somebody sent me a nice screen. Good back pick. There you go. That's a good screen. The ball loose at midcourt, tipped away. Wright has it knocked away. And he traveled with it. Oh, oh. North Carolina will have possession with 1.31 to go. UNC calls a timeout as Rutgers imploding here. I mean, they're coming unraveled. They're coming unraveled. They're panicking. T tough shots. Not doing a good job of maintaining composure. Let's go back to the studio and check in with Matt Weiner. Matt? All right, guys. And we are back. 1.31 to go. One of the things that Rutgers has really struggled with, good decision-making offensively. That's what you want, a great pick. Good job by Manuel getting his hands on the ball while he's on the guy. Actually, it's Raymond Felton knocking the ball away. There's the walk right there. All right, moments ago, got good ball pressure up. Felton's doing a good job hawking the ball. There's the double dribble. Got it. Well, Brad, I gotta ask you something. How much of Rutgers' poor decision making offensively is a function or a product of the good ball pressure defensively by Carolina? Well, absolutely good ball pressure, but what happens, and you can see it, is they're starting to think about the position they're in at this point. First half of this ball game, they were rock and rolling, loose playing the game. The game's still the same. They're getting too too tense, too much pressure. Rutgers with no timeouts remaining. Carolina with three 30-second timeouts remaining. We're here at Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I'm Mark Jones along with Brad Doherty. In a game where the freshmen for the Tar Heels have risen to the occasion here a little bit here in the second half. And Herbe Lamazana, meanwhile, for Rutgers, has carried his team in the second half, but in the last three minutes has not touched the ball. Okay, I mean, I can't believe he's not gotten the basketball. Felton out top. Good ball moved by North Carolina. 
Williams made one from there just a few minutes ago. Good post up on the Kings. And Matt Doherty calls a 30-second timeout for the Tar Heels. Now, what do you do with your Rutgers? Do you give them a different look here coming out of the timeout defensively? I think, you still, I think you still stick with the man defense because they've got good matchups on the floor right now. Everybody's got, got a, got a you know, good check, and the speed is, is equated out front with the two guards. So I like the matchups. Just talk. We got to talk on the screens in the ballroom. Brad, it's getting hot in here. I'm, I'm, I'm lathering up, too, a little I'm bit. Lathering, and I'll, I'll be lathered on Friday, too, for the Owens Corning preseason NIT as it continues on ESPN 2, 7 Eastern time. North Carolina Greensboro taking on number two, Kansas. Roy Williams crew really got it rolling so far. Roy Williams got Steve Robinson back out on his uh, staff out there. Kansas. State, yeah. And uh, doing a good job out there. Love to see Coach Williams group do well. North Carolina with a chance to take the lead. Felton into the backcourt. Rutgers staying in their man defense. we pick and roll high. Good show that time by Wright. Did a great job of getting up, giving him a chance. They go inside to McCann. He, he walks. Good call. Very good call. Boy, that was the play they wanted to run, and they got it down where they wanted to get it. Now, okay, so now, which team is going to show the maturity? Okay, good pass down low. Yeah, he got tripped a little bit, and, and there was the walk. They okay. have Shields bring it across the midcourt line. Let's see if there's patience. Under a minute to go. Sherrod out top on Phil. Well, they got him extended. Coleman, he's been ice cold all game. That's the team's hit. best offensive player. Man, what a tough shot. can't find the runner. Give it to Lamazano. Give him a chance to shoot the ball. Felton to Manuel on the baseline. Good pass. Williams. Nice. That's nice. That's good ball moving. Very unselfish basketball under the goal. Rutgers has no timeouts remaining. Use those timeouts up. That's going to be. A, that's going to hurt them big time. Sherrod calls out the play. I think we're going to pick and roll. Lamazana give it back to him. He hasn't had a shot. Sherrod throws it away. Oh, man, no, no. A severe meltdown by the Scarlet Knights. They have to foul. Wow. With 9.2 to go. They just came unraveled, Mark. They had the ball game one. Had the ball game one. I mean, that's just got to be able to get a, get a better shot opportunity than that. Brad, so often you hear coaches like Gary Waters say you have to be strong with the ball down the stretch. What exactly do they mean by that? you got to be strong with the basketball. If you're passing the ball, you can't be sloppy with the ball. Make crisp passes. Catch the ball. Be aggressive with it. Make good, strong moves. If you show the assertiveness, a lot of times you'll get a foul opportunity. Kansas now with an opportunity to ice this one away. The lead is up to three. Big shot. Rashad McCants. Two biggest shots in his career thus far right here. Made one of it. On the heels of a 28-point night two nights ago. Great poise by this young group. Getting back into this ball game and giving themselves a chance to win. And now they're taking advantage of it. They did it on courage. Yeah, the absolutely. Defensive end. Absolutely. Lead up to four. Rutgers with no timeouts. Sherrod. And that'll just about do it. The North Carolina freshman class, all six of them, the three All-Americans in their second midterm test, early term test, receiving another passing grade. Might not have been a straight A performance, but certainly at least a B performance. As they come from behind and now advance to the semifinals next Wednesday in New York. Carolina moves on. They play the winner of UNC Greensboro and Kansas again Friday on ESPN at 7 o'clock Eastern time. The final score once again is 71-67 from Chapel Hill, North Carolina.